Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates is in Beijing for talks with Chinese President Xi Jinping. It's the latest in a string of high-profile but not widely publicized visits from American business leaders. Tesla boss Elon Musk was there just days ago, meeting with the country's foreign minister within hours of his arrival. Other big name visits over the past few months have included Apple boss uh, Tim Cook and JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon. The visits come as the Chinese economy shows several signs of slowing growth and tensions with the United States remain high. So what's behind this flurry of meetings? To discuss that, I'm joined now by China analyst Fraser Howie. Fraser, it's good to see you. Now, Bill Gates has got a really warm welcome in Beijing. She called him an old friend. How would you interpret that? Uh, well, of course, I would hate to be called an old friend by Xi Jinping. I have to say, if the Communist Party calls you a friend or an old friend, um, I always think that's a bit of a curse rather than a blessing. So, but Bill Gates is, you know, for, for decades was the world's richest man. He's been one of the most successful US businessmen ever. So he gets a warm welcome wherever he goes. But all these meetings are part of, to some extent, a, a theater or a pantomime of China trying to show that it's open for business again, that it isn't trying to, uh, it's trying to isolate the world. Um, and of course, US business has been one of the biggest promoters of China over the decades. The whole reform and opening era, US business has poured billions into China, has made billions in China, um, and has driven all that, you know, much of that economic growth. And China wants to show, look, we're, we're back for business. But the reality is much more complicated than that. These visits, though, have been very low key, and we don't really know what was discussed during them. Why the silence? OK, well, first of all, I think, you know, many of these visits, I think, are pretty pro forma. You know, Bill Gates now, he doesn't run Microsoft. Um, he isn't even that big a shareholder. He's ultimately, you know, he's not a private citizen, of course, but he, you know, he's interested in inflammatory global health issues and things like that. That's what he wants to work with the Chinese. To, the reason it's quiet, though, I think is because they don't want to draw attention because there are a lot of very, you know, it's a, China is a bipartisan issue in the States a lot of very vocal critics of China, and they certainly don't want to draw attention to their visits for fear that they're going to be called a traitor or kowtowing to, to the dictators of Beijing and things like that. So they're trying to keep the contacts relatively low profile, um, or as best they can, and a sort of a quietly, quietly type of diplomacy. All right. This, this, uh, these visits come at a time when the Chinese economy really looks like it's slowing down. How seriously should we take those concerns? Uh, oh, it's very serious. The Chinese economy is most certainly slowing down. You know, there's everyone was, or there was lots of commentary about there's going to be a big uptick post their, their opening after COVID. That didn't really come. It certainly didn't come in the consumer space that people, although they had saved money during, during through COVID, uh, the economy is very uh, difficult now. Unemployment is high. Property is very depressed. And so this is not consumption-led growth at all. Um, and of course, what we also saw during COVID is this tipping point of population, that China's population is now shrinking, that the working age population is falling fast, and the Chinese are having no children. So the story of China forever growing, miracle economy, the world's biggest population, all those shoes are very much falling. All right, Fraser Howie, thank you very much. Thank you very much.